Yes, hello and welcome to our today's uh, webinar uh, where we want to talk about automated ticket exchange with uh, Mercedes-Benz or Daimler Stark via Augustin's Symphony. Um, thanks a lot for, for joining the webinar. I hope you can hear me well. My name is uh, Ralf Klipke from Argosense. I'm responsible for sales and marketing at our company. And I have with me uh, on the line Abdul Gulam, who is uh, one of our consultants, who will guide you through the live demonstration um, later on. Um, before we are starting with the uh, presentation, um, yeah, I will already post the agenda. But anyway, if you have any questions during the webinar, just type them, type them into the uh, Q&A panel here uh, you have available in your Teams application. Um, and uh, we will then um, answer them collectively um, at the end um, of the webinar when we have the questions and answers session here. But anyway, as I said, you can type them in at any time during the webinar uh, starting from now on. So let me have a short introduction about Argosense. So we have founded the company in 2009, trying to help companies uh, to connect different tools in software and system development, um, and also to, uh, to, to connect with uh, external business partners to exchange data. And the goal is always to optimize the cooperation between people, teams, companies involved to get the maximum of visibility and uh, traceability uh, in terms of software and uh, system development here. Here are a few of our customers uh, on our reference table, so feel free to contact us uh, if you want to have a direct connection to one of our existing customers and uh, want to hear on first hand um, how they're um, how, how they're uh, working with Argosense and their experience uh, with our products and our company. So just feel free to contact your sales person or whoever you are in contact with at Argosense or use our typical um, contact form or email addresses uh, you will see later on as well um, to get in touch with us regarding such an option here. Um, talking about Argosense Symphony, especially since Symphony 1, our latest iteration of our, of our product, what it's basically doing is it is um, um, here for managing and automating all of your data flows and integration needs for development tools and ALM platforms. So what you see here on this picture uh, is the uh, on a from a high level, uh, the different domains we are covering from starting from requirements management tools, yeah, test management, change management, and so on. So if you have a kind of a best of breed, uh, let's say, um, implementation in your house, you can use Argus and Symphony to let your different tools speak together and um, synchronize data with, with each other to enhance and uh, establish a certain amount of, of traceability here. So how are we doing that? Uh, we have that basic platform with, which is kind of a man in the middle um, and on that platform we will apply different adapters for the tools you have in um, in place so that um, they are able to talk to each other that means the adapters they are doing more or less the translation between the specified API of each respective tool normalize it into an internal kind of language for our platform and from on the output side, we are doing the same translation on the back side again. And so it goes back and forth, more or less uh, in, on high level in just a few words explained. This is what we what we are doing with our platform. The goal is always to achieve the uh, best possible automation so that uh, your developers and your staff does not have to do anything with, with our system uh, that runs completely in the background and your developers really can concentrate on working in their specified tool they are used to work with it. Um, Symphony and Symphony 1 has more or less two um, big use cases we are covering with. So one is, uh, as I already said, the 
integration of your internal tools you have in place, for example, coming from IBM, from Charma, from PTC or Intland, Microsoft, whatever is your tool provider. Um, and for these, for these products, we offer these kind of best of breed um, integration uh, system with, with Augustine's symphony here. The second use case is if you also have um, external business partners uh, you want to exchange data with, so we call it B2B data exchange. Here you can also open your system or usually in the automotive industry, the um, big OEMs or the car manufacturers, they have kind of so-called um, supplier portals um, where you can connect directly to and um, with our adapter portfolio also we enable a complete seamless and automated data transfer so that your developers do not have to care how they need to connect and maybe they have another interface so they are just working in their tool that are there that which uh, with, uh, they are familiar with for example Jira or a code beamer application or PDC integrity or whatever um, so there is no need for copying pasting data everything goes automatically in the background that's what we are guaranteeing for you and this is also the topic we want to specialize here of course and also we want to specialize uh, with um, with the integration between any internal um, tool you have in our example today we will use uh, Glacia and Jira and with the um, Mercedes-Benz Daimler Stark application or supplier portal that these two tools we want to connect today and then you will see how data flows from Daimler uh, to our Jira and what we can do um, with that if we have it in our internal tool here this is what we what we will see today amongst other things of course so the usually the prerequisites or requirements for establishing such a connection with uh, Mercedes-Benz or any other OEM they are typically um, typically the same. So there's a technical adaption to the tool or portal specific formats or interfaces. This is what we are completely care about with our adapters and the platform itself. Then of course, uh, you as a supplier, for example, and uh, the car manufacturer, they, they agree on a specifically defined process or workflow. So how the data uh, needs to flow between between you and your partner, what are the rules uh, which should we encounter and we should um, consider here for for the data for the data flow? Um, this is what what then we are reflecting um, in Argosense Symphony. Usually, we have done that um, through customizations, but with Symphony One and the new adapter for for the Stark system, here we have uh, much better options to if that to you as kind of an out of a box system more or less and this is what we want to what we want to show today um because these um, processes or workflows especially at uh, at the mercedes-benz size they are quite standardized in the meantime so that means for all the different projects or all the different um, suppliers mercedes-benz is working with um, they use the same kind of workflows there's a minimal, let's say, adjustment that has to be done according to um, the system you are using internally in terms of what system you are you using and maybe how your data is set up, how a data model looks like, which kind of uh, item types you are using. But this is something we learn later in the demonstration. So in the end, um, what 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 is required also from the OEMs is usually that they want to see the data completely automated. Um, flowing back and forth. So uh, I think the Stark also has a web, kind of a web interface uh, provided uh, for the suppliers, but that would make it much more complicated for you as a, as a supplier using that on top of what you already have in-house. So we are also um, trying to, to go with that complete automation, of course, with Symfony. Um, we can reuse all the technology um, within our system that means if you have different projects uh, for the same for the same uh, OEM here so with Daimler um, 
you can um, the adapters and, and everything you have uh, prepared for can be reused. You just have to more or less set up new synchronization projects and that's it. And then you can run other projects as well, of course, with the same, with the same platform with a minimum of effort. Of course, um, we are or we, we give you much more freedom in the choice of which defect tracking tool or change management tool you are you are using, or maybe you want to change that uh, uh, in a certain point of time. Also, that is possible with with our technology, of course, here because we have adapters for usually all leading um, change or tracking tools here on the market. So the agreed processes and the workflows, um, they then have to be coordinated, of course, with your internal tool workflows. That's what I meant before. So there have to be made small adjustments uh, within, within our product um, to, um, to get to that certain level of coordination and, and adjustment here. And uh, yeah, from there on, uh, we can go directly and start syncing uh, the data and uh, regardless of uh, how how big the volume is if you have big attachments of course there are limits mainly given by the tools from both sides um, so but usually we do not have certain limits in, in, in synchronizing data regardless of how many data sets or how big the attachments are so this is mainly limited by by the tools on the left and right hand side so um, more or less so what you will, will see today from, from Abdul in a few minutes or seconds, um, the configuration uh, without any, any coding here. So for those of you who already are using uh, our Symfony Classic platform and have uh, that Java or people-based processes uh, set up, so this is something what we have now generalized and put as a and into our product so that you can use Symfony 1 right out of the box, so to say. Um, so with predefined uh, synchronization rules, templates, including attachments and comments, so everything which is important for, for the exchanges. So we have learned from all the exchanges you already have done with, uh, with Mercedes-Benz and put that into, into our template and, the, and our extensions so that you do not have to uh, program anymore here for setting up um, such kind of uh, synchronization projects. Clearly the mapping of attributes and enumeration and enumerations and values that has to be done, of course. Um, this is something which is uh, completely uh, different from project to project that has to be done. Uh, by the customer, but that's also quite quite easy. You will see or you can see uh, our dashboard with live status and statistics. Um, we have um, numerous ways of error handling, and I think we're improving that from version to version with Argus and Symphony so that it's very easy then for you to follow up if anything is not working. Is there any connection problem or maybe is there any mandatory field not considered in the synchronization, whatever, so that you can clearly see that in, in the error messages. We are delivering them to you as the administrator. And if there are, for example, if you are using Symphony 1 for other kind of uh, synchronizations, we can somehow, like you know it with Symphony Classic, uh, we now use that term for extensions where we can have um, an additional customization um, um, on top of that what we already um, ship as sync rules and templates which are predefined here. So now that's um, mainly my part for before we now start uh, with the live demonstration. So Abdul, I think you can unmute and uh, share your screen if you like. Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar. Today, uh, like Ralph said, uh, he has covered most of the aspects of the tool itself. And now I will walk you through uh, a short demo on how to import these start tickets into Jira. 
So of course, this Jira application then can be swapped out with the code Beamer or any other kind of tool that you are using. So let's jump into it. I will start my uh, screen sharing and I hope everyone can see my screen. So the first thing that you see when you log into Symfony is of course the, the login window. And as soon as you log in, it takes you to the dashboard that uh, Ralph was talking about. Um, the user interface of Symfony, uh, we have tried to keep it as minimalistic as possible. And uh, the configurations of uh, the synchronizations are also being set up in a more straightforward and a wizard guided way, let's say. Now this is the syncs window and underneath the syncs window, you can create as many new syncs as you would like. So to, to showcase how easy it is to, to use Symfony and then synchronize Stark and Jira, even though I have created a project here, I will walk you through how easy it is to, to create a new synchronization. So what we have done is with Symfony 1, we have incorporated most of the uh, process logics that need to be implemented into this out of the box solution called the merge process. This process ships with every installation of Symfony and you can use it right out of the box. And for the synchronization name, I will give it a start to Jira demo, let's say. The source tool here, I'm going to uh, select Stark, and for the target tool, I'm going to select Jira. So like I said, you can choose Azure or CodeBeamer or Integrity or any of the other tools that you might be using internally. And you can, of course, like I, uh, like Ralph mentioned, you can uh, transfer, choose to transfer the attachments, or you can also choose to transfer the comments, which is again uh, inbuilt into this merge process. So the merge process is going to automatically handle the synchronization of the attachments and the comments uh, from Stark and Jira. Now, as soon as I uh, give all the details for the new sync, it is created. And then you see a couple of icons here for configuring this synchronization. So what now I have to do is connect this synchronization to the source tool, which is Stark uh, in this case, and then I have to connect it to the target, which is Jira in my case, and then I'll be able to set up the mappings. So let's set up the uh, Stark connection. So here, as soon as you click the first icon, it shows you that it is the Stark config that we need to fill out. And it needs the server URL, uh, the ID, and the token that you received from Stark for connecting to their system. I have this in my key pass. I'll just put it. And as soon as I hit test connection, what happens is Symfony uses these par uh, parameters that you have provided and tries to establish a connection with that system. And on top of that, it tries to pull all the projects that are available for this particular user. So let's talk to the central inbox. And inside the central inbox, we have multiple item types that we can synchronize from start. And in this case, we are going to synchronize the defects, let's say for the demo purpose. So as soon as I hit submit, now all uh, the relevant information for connecting to the Stark system has been configured in Symfony uh, for that particular synchronization. So now uh, the target side for me, I have chosen to do it with Jira. So it walks you through uh, the similar configuration. So again, I will take all of this stuff from my um, from my keepers. So let's go. Let's put in the Jira URL. And then the password. Uh, 
So similar to the Stark system, now Symphony has connected to Jira using my credentials and it has now pulled all the projects that I can work with. So I'm going to use this merge test two project that I've set up. And I'm going to use issue type bug. And then once these two have been selected, I can then click submit. So now what has happened is now this synchronization is now connected to Stark, uh, has all the details to connect to Stark, and now it also has all the details to connect to Jira. Now once all the information uh, that Symphony needs to connect to the respective tools is available, we can go ahead and do the mapping. So this is the part where uh, some kind of a preparation is needed when beforehand. So here you're going to decide uh, which uh, attributes you want to map uh, to uh, from the source to which attributes in the target. The way we have designed this whole mapping module is, is that the direction in which you want to synchronize the attributes is now uh, on the attribute level. You can configure this in the attribute level. People who are coming from the classic world of Symfony, you would remember that we would have to create two different set of mappings, one for the Stark to Jira direction and another for the Jira to Stark direction. So we have simplified that concept and we have brought the direction in which an attribute is going to be synchronized to the attribute level. So when you are defining which field or which attribute has to be synchronized, you can choose whether it has to be synchronized to the source to the target or in both directions. So let's say both. And then in the source field, as soon as you click the source field, now what happens is now using the credentials that you configured, that I configured in the first step, Symphony has now connected to the Stark system and it has pulled all the attributes that are available for the defect tracker. And from here I can take, let's say for example, the title, and put it into the summary field in Jira. Now, since I've selected uh, that the title and the summary should be synchronized in both directions, there is a chance that a conflict can happen. So there is a chance that someone changes the title in Stark and at the same time, someone changed the summary in Jira. So Symfony has uh, three possibilities. Uh, Symfony offers three possibilities on how to handle these conflicts. So you can choose by default always the source system wins when there is a conflict, or you can choose that it always the target system wins, or finally you can choose that the process ends with an error, and then the user can manually check what the error is and try to rectify the, the, the issue manually. So for the sake of the demo, I'll just put source wins and submit, and then I'll do the same for now the description. Source wins submit. Um, for enumeration fields, it works pretty much the same. So let's say, for example, if we want to synchronize priority, uh, we can synchronize priority to priority. Let's say the source always wins. And now we have an option to specify the default value for priority. So priority being an enumeration field where you have multiple choices to choose from, you can then tell Symfony if there is no value set, then this is the default value that has to be set on the source and on the target. Now after submit, what you can do further is on double clicking such enumeration fields, you are taken into uh, one more value mapping screen where you can map the values uh, from the source to the target. So here again, what Symfony is doing is it is connecting to the data model uh, behind each of the systems. So behind Stark and behind Jira in this case, and trying to load all the valid enumeration field values for that particular enumeration field, in this case priority. So in Stark, there are these four values that you can set. And in Jira, there are a little bit more. So depending on how the business wants to handle this, uh, then you can create a mapping that reflects uh, what the business expects. So this is uh, an example value mapping that I will set up now. So let's go 
um, it goes to medium and then high goes to high and in case there is um, a, a missing mapping you can just uh, then set it to uh, the same values so of course here there is a mismatch on the source and the targets which is not a problem you can still map uh, the, the values depending on uh, the values that you see here so once the mapping is set up, uh, we are through with the process. And then what we have done for the star customers is like uh, my colleague Ralph mentioned, uh, there is a, a specific uh, business scenario that a star has defined on how this data should be exchanged between the OEM and the supplier. So they have predefined workflows that they expect the suppliers to follow. And what we have tried to do based on all the synchronizations that we have done in the past, we have tried to capture all this information and put it into the extension. So this was the extension that uh, Ralph was talking about where the merge process comes out of the box. The stock extension will also be delivered to the customers who want to use stock and you'll be able to use it right out of the box with minimal changes, let's say. But if you have more uh, specific use cases or customizations that you would like to do, you can also include that as part of this extension. So <clears throat> that is the extension comp topic. If, if you guys have more questions, we can of course get a little bit deeper into it. Uh, and then comes the scheduling. So the scheduling is where you schedule how frequently the synchronization should be run by Symfony and you can run it every minute in steps of every minute or 15 minutes or um, 10 minutes and then you can also run it in steps of hours every one hour every two hours stuff like that and you can also uh, schedule it to run at exact time points or in between a particular range of minutes and hours. And you can choose which days of the week that the synchronization should run. So again, here we have tried to uh, minimize the complexity of setting up the schedule with cron strings and whatnot. And we have tried to come up with a user interface, which is a little bit more intuitive and easier to use for synchronizing your synchronizations then uh, for scheduling your synchronizations. So at the moment I will not set up any schedule. I'm going to just manually run the process. So for that, of course, uh, we have the run button here and this run button will then do a full synchronization from the source to the target system. So this is going to uh, happen in the background and uh, we can then watch uh, how the synchronization is flowing, how many items are being processed, how many failed, and so on. These kind of statistical information then will pop up in our dashboard and we'll be able to see uh, the, 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 the metrics of the synchronization, let's say. So as we are waiting uh, for the synchronization to happen, we can then have a look into our merge test to Jira project that I just created. So at the moment, uh, there are no issues here uh, at the moment. And once the synchronization starts, we will then be able to see uh, the issues getting created on, uh, on the Jira side and that are pulled in from start. So as we are uh, waiting for the tickets to uh, be synchronized, what we can do is also have a look at the um, extension on how it has been implemented. So for people who have more questions, of course, we can go a little bit deeper into that. But uh, to give you a short overview, this is what this is our extensions that we have created for the stock use case and here uh, basically what we have done is uh, we have made sure that uh, the mapping of the relevant fields for the relevant status changes 
uh, handled by the extensions uh, uh, appropriately. So the main thing is when you're doing an update on a stock system, there are two, uh, there are three ways that you can do an update. Uh, there are three points. So one is the, the ticket is fixed uh, in the supplier side or it is rejected on the supplier side, or there's just a normal update that you want to do. And depending on uh, which uh, part of the workflow you want to trigger, what we have done is we have made sure that while updating the, the stock ticket that the relevant fields that are needed for the fixed status and the relevant fields that are needed for rejecting a ticket are part of the update then. So there will be a minor tweaks that we would have to do to the extension or while deployed on your environment. So for example, the status field might be called state, something like this. The fixed value can be something else. Uh, as called something else in your environment. So there are just these one or two values that has to be modified in the extension to match your environment and your target tool that you're synchronizing to. And with that information, uh, with that update, then the extension can be adapted to, to your specific environment and your specific use case, let's say. So in the meantime, in the dashboard, if we take a look, uh, so we have transferred 27 objects. There have been 13 comments that have been transferred. And then uh, in the next snapshot, 91 objects, with 18 attachments, 99 comments. And you can see that the uh, data synchronization is happening in the background. Now the stock system has quite a lot of defects, almost 600 defects or so. And uh, so naturally this is going to take a little bit uh, more time uh, than a normal synchronization uh, would take. But the good thing about uh, Symfony is now that we have incorporated the last successful synchronization directly into the query functionality of the Symfony 1 process. So without any extra level of coding, uh, the sync process automatically checks when it was last run and then takes that timestamp and only synchronizes items that have been modified after this timestamp. So this again is going to happen automatically. Uh, nothing that you that thing has to be done. And now let's take a look at the uh, Jira project itself. And now you can see uh, there are these uh, tickets being uh, created within uh, um, within Jira that were created in Stark. <coughs> so, with the priority, uh, getting the appropriate value and all the tickets. So let's see how many tickets. So we have already 305 tickets that have been created. So uh, in the last two, three, within the last two, three minutes, uh, you can see that the synchronization speed is also quite high. Uh, uh, in, in, in Symphony 1 and the reasons for that. So within the next sync, another 50 was created. Now the reason for this is um, uh, Symphony 1 uh, breaks away from the classic world of uh, synchronization. What we have done is uh, we have uh, created a true uh, parallelism in Symphony. So what happens is Symphony at any given point of time can uh, uh, transfer 30 objects uh, at the same point in time. So uh, the, the parallelization of Symphony is quite efficient and quite uh, quick. So it, within, within a few seconds, you will see that um, more than 30 objects are transferred uh, within a few seconds. So this is also um, uh, the, uh, one of the <coughs> capabilities of Symphony 1 that we have improved upon uh, since the classic world where there was this slat, slot mechanism and each process was taking up a slot, but rather now there are 30 parallelism tasks that Symfony 1 can do. And depending on how many things you are running, the objects are going to be constantly synchronized by Symfony 1 in the background. So this is pretty much, let's say, a simple use case of how you can synchronize items from Stark to Jira with very minimal coding, let's say. So the the, um, uh, the extension part will also be uh, provided to you. 
the extension part to satisfy the stock workflow. This also you will receive from us and the minor changes that you would have to do is just change the status attribute uh, name and the status attribute value. That's it. And with that you would have extension fit for your use case. And you can then synchronize the stock items into your uh, target tool in a matter of minutes, let's say. And this was the errors that uh, Ralph was talking about. And here, as you can see, there are, there are a couple of errors uh, that have been there. And then here you can see there was a problem with creating a comment. So there are, uh, we have tried to structure this uh, um, error mechanism a little bit more clear. So we have tried to tell you, uh, we have tried to highlight the information from the error message a little bit so you see what is the sync it happened in, what was the source tool, what was the target tool, and basically what was the uh, exception that was happening while the synchronization was happening. So here it says the comment body cannot be empty. So which means there was an empty comment in stock which was trying to be synchronized into uh, into Jira and Jira doesn't like that the comment body is empty. So therefore you see this error. And it also tells you uh, which object it was in, uh, in in the source. So this is the stock ID and this is then the Jira ID. So you also see this information uh, um, uh, directly in the message. So what was the uh, uh, IDs also that failed? So this gives you a better idea. So we have tried to capture all that information and put it into the error message. And like Ralph said, we are constantly uh, in improving upon this, improving upon this so that it becomes even more easier to read. Uh, the error message is easier for then the users to debug it and exactly reach the point where the error happened and try to fix these kind of issues. Uh, there is an integration uh, between Symphony 1 and Teams. So what we have done is uh, with a webhook, you can then connect the error messages to a particular Teams group in your Teams and the relevant people uh, can be added to that Teams group and whenever there are error messages that are coming up in the synchronization, then these error messages could be sent over uh, via Teams uh, and then the relevant people will be notified. So this was also one of the pain points, let's say with the classic symphony, how do we automate the monitoring of symphony? And now this brings another layer uh, of visibility to what is going on in symphony uh, in a more automated process, rather than always having to log in and see if the sync has run properly or not. So this is, uh, let's say, the, the 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 end of the demo of how we can then synchronize items from stock to your local tool and if you have any questions please feel free to ask oh thank you abdul for that extensive uh, demonstration um well go back to my screen here second Okay. So what what have we seen? Uh, what are the advantages uh, using Argus and Symphony? And first of all, we encourage, of course, also our um, 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 customers uh, which are already using a Symphony for exchange with Star uh, that you, for example, for new projects, uh, make a switch to the Symphony One platform, which is then I think uh, much easier for you to handle and to administer in future. And um, so we are just encouraging you for that. Um, yeah, what are the advantages for using Symphony in general for B2B data exchange? Uh, so we are we are here for managing your data on both sides in a consistent way, of course. Um, your data is also always up to date um, on, on both sides, depending on, let's say, how the schedule uh, is, is set up here. But uh, many of our customers, they run they run the synchronization every 15 minutes or maybe every half an hour. And I think from a development point of view, uh, talking about um, 
bug reports uh, and, 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 and issues. I think that's a, that's a quite good um, schedule you can run here. So you will also always be up to date and your customer as well, of course. Um, as we have seen for your developers, they, as Abdul has shown, they just work in your in your Jira, in your Code Beamer, in your Integrity, or what, whatever you use. They do not have to connect to any kind of web front end from Stark or from any other OEM. So for them, there is really no 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 um, no change. They don't have to care about when something needs to be synchronized. The automatism and all the rules will care about that. Um, of course, there's then less coordination effort with your with your customers, so less phone calls, less web meetings necessary because the information is flowing automatically and everybody has the right information at the right time on his on his desktop, so to say. And uh, without having uh, your developers um, manually copying copying and pasting data from one tool to another, of course, we are elim eliminating a uh, and, and one one source of potential errors here, of course, so which results in higher data quality in the end. And of course, uh, all that together will help you in lower the cost and uh, maximize the productivity uh, for your for your people. Um, and I think that's one of the most valuable benefits you can achieve with uh, with Argus and Symphony here. And of course, last but not least, um, as we have seen how quick such a system can be set up, um, there's a lot of flexibility here in um, adapting that to new projects, maybe also to other customers. Um, we will also open Symphony 1, for example, for the exchanges with Volkswagen, uh, Volkswagen Group and Porsche and so on with the KPM uh, supplier portal that will come soon. And we will also host a webinar for that uh, within the next weeks. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We will also help you uh, with the migration or for setting up new projects uh, for Porsche FIF exchanges. So Porsche already announced that new projects will start only with KPM in future. They also may want to migrate existing and running projects from FIF to KPM. So we also will uh, support you for that. So just get in touch with us uh, if there is anything uh, coming up to you. And now I think um, it's up to your questions. So, so far I do not see anyone's. Uh, maybe we give you a few seconds. Um, anyway, I will jump to the next screen here. So if there is um, if, if you do not have direct contact with Inagosense from a sales or technical perspective, uh, here use our general contact data um, to raise any inquiries. If you have any additional questions, also maybe later after that webinar, um, or maybe also with regards to any other kind of, of questions regarding to Inagosense Symphony in general, uh, not related to our webinar today, um, we are more than happy to answer all your questions here. So as uh, no more is coming back here from the outside to us, um, I want to thank you very much for joining that webinar also in the name of Abdul and the whole Argosense company. And I'm um, looking forward to um, talking to you um, on one of our next webinars. Stay tuned. We'll inform you through the regular channels. Um, so. Thank you very much again and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.